Hey guys, it's Wilker Patrick, nursing educator inside Corsetta, and today we're going to go over isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic fluids. Now we're going to get right into it. I don't want to waste any time. Make sure you guys download the fluid and electrolytes worksheet. It's completely free on our website on tactilebr.com. You can find it in the link in the description below. So in this video, we're going to go over each one, isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic IV fluids. We're going to go over the common IV fluids that you'll find in them what they do to the body, and what conditions they're related to. But before we get into the IV fluids specifically, we're going to go over the basics of what fluids are and what they do in the body. So when we talk about these IV fluids, it's always related to what it's doing to the cells in our body. So first things first, we need to know about fluid spaces. What are fluid spaces? There's two types, and it has, once again, to do with the cell. We have the intracellular fluid, which intra means inside. So inside the cell, the fluid stays. And then we have extracellular fluid. So the fluid is outside the cell. And then we have the extracellular space, which actually has two types, but that's why I say there's three fluid spaces. So extracellular includes intravenous, so what's actually in our veins and our vascular system. And then we have interstitial. So the interstitial space is the fluid that is surrounding the cell itself. So those are both considered extracellular fluid. Now the interstitial fluid space, there shouldn't be a whole lot of fluid that actually stays there. So when there is a buildup of that, that's where we see the pitting edema. So it's also called third spacing. So most of our fluid should be either into the cell, so inside the cell, so intracellular space, or when we say extracellular space, it should be in your intravenous system. Now to understand what these IV fluids do to our cells, we need to know the process of osmosis and diffusion, but mostly osmosis. What is osmosis? Well, osmosis is the movement of water from a lower concentration to a higher concentration. And then there's also something called diffusion where the solute itself is moving. So think of solute like electrolytes. So sodium is the biggest one, especially with these IV fluids we're about to talk about. All these IV fluids are components of sodium. There's sodium inside the IV fluids. So let's go ahead and directly relate to that. So diffusion is the movement of a solute from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. So think downhill because downhill starts with a D and so does diffusion. So that's how you guys can remember that it goes from a higher concentration to a lower concentration because it's going downhill. And then once again, guys, you're gonna wanna write these down because these are very important on actually how to understand what these IV fluids are doing to our cells. So let's remember all these IV fluids have some sort of sodium in them. And what we need to know is that sodium sucks. So what does that mean? It means wherever sodium is, whenever it builds up in concentration, it's very concentrated in sodium, that's when the water follows. So that's when osmosis happens because water is coming to dilute that sodium because we don't want it to ever get so concentrated. So whenever there's a high amount of solute, that is where the fluid follows. So that's where we're going to start getting into isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic IV solutions. But let's give an example. We have our fluid spaces, right? We have the intracellular and we have the extracellular. Well, if there's a high amount of sodium in that extracellular space, so the intravenous space, that water is going to leave the cell to come dilute the sodium that's high in the extracellular space. Because what is that? That's osmosis. The water wants to make sure it's balanced throughout the entire body. So when we have a high concentration of a solute, which of course sodium is the number one, then that water is going to follow to make sure that it's balanced. Same thing with the other side. So if we have a high amount of sodium that's sitting in the cell, then that water is going to leave the extracellular space and then go into the cell to make sure it's balanced out. Because this is how we maintain our water balance in our body through this sodium balance and osmosis, water movement, is supposed to help balance it all out. So if you can understand that, you're going to easily understand these types of fluids because they're simply just helping move water around. Except for one, isotonic fluids. Isotonic fluids are a medium balance of sodium, so what it does is it makes sure that the sodium and the water don't go anywhere, it just expands the vascular space. So I want you to remember this little saying, iso still in the vessel vill. So when we give isotonic fluids, its intention is to expand the vascular space and a lot of the times we'll give these to patients who have hypotension, so really low blood pressure, to expand that vascular space to increase the vascular volume. So this is not making water go into the interstitial space, or if there's more sodium in the extracellular space, it's not making it go into the extracellular space and making it fluid overload, because isotonic fluids are just simply there to expand the vascular space so it doesn't do anything to the cell. Your common isotonic fluids are 0.9% saline, which is normal saline, lactated ringers as well. Now some quick NCLEX facts about isotonic fluids. Normal saline is the only IV fluid that can be compatible with giving blood, so write that down. Number two, once again, indications, they commonly ask about this. What fluid would you give with a hypotensive patient? Well, most of the time it's gonna be isotonic because it is the safest fluid that you can give without messing with the cell. 
And if a patient is dehydrated, once again, we're just trying to hydrate the patient by expanding the vascular space because dehydration is related to hypotension, then we're going to give them an isotonic fluid. And the last NCLEX fact about isotonic fluids is that you never want to give lactated ringers to a kidney patient because it's higher in potassium contents. And kidney patients like to hold on to potassium. And that's not something you typically want to give a kidney patient. So avoid lactated ringers with kidney failure patients. Hey guys, it's Wilker Patrick, nursing educator inside Corsetta. I wanted to let you guys know that I will help you with anything you need at any time if you just send me a text at 940-218-4062, 940-218-4062. Let's get back to the video. Okay, so now hypotonic fluids. So I want you guys to think of hypo is similar to hippo. And what are hippos? They're swollen and fat. So what does the hypotonic fluids do to the cell? It makes it swollen and fat. So when you give hypotonic fluids, then you can expect the cell to swell up. Why, you might ask? Well, if you guys remember that sodium sucks. Well, hypotonic is low, right? Hypo means low. Well, there's a low amount of sodium in hypotonic fluid. If you guys remember, osmosis works by moving water from a lower concentration to a higher concentration. Well, when you give hypotonic fluids that is low in sodium, so the fluid goes into the extracellular space, well, where do you think that water is going to go? Because now the sodium concentration in the vascular space is lower. So now it's going to go to a higher concentration area, which is inside the cell, because compared to now, since we're giving hypotonic fluids, that osmosis is going to work. Well, it's low here, so I'm going to go to the cell where it has a higher concentration of sodium. So we like to give these fluids to anybody who has cellular dehydration. So it's things such as diabetic ketoacidosis is a common indication for hypotonic fluids. And then patients with hypernatremia. Why? Because we're diluting the sodium once again. That water is going to leave that vascular space and go into the cell so we can dilute that hypernatremia. Now, remember the type of fluids is actually pretty easy. Well, if you guys remember, hypo means low, which means it has a low amount of sodium. Well, these fluids, if you look at the examples here, they are low numbers because it's a low amount of sodium. So it really isn't as complicated as you think. So if you see that there is a low number such as 0.45% or 0.225%, it's lower than your other options. So that is a hypotonic fluid. Now, the only exception in this is D5W. This is considered a hypotonic fluid. So that's something that you'll just need to remember. And it actually is the most common fluid that's used clinically in the hypotonic fluid space. All right, guys. So now we're on hypertonic fluids. This is our last one. I want you guys to remember this. Hyper children stay outside. So you want those hyper children to stay outside. Well, why? Because hypertonic fluids are high in sodium because hyper means high. So if you think that the water stays outside, well, it's going to be outside of what? The cell. So when you give a hypertonic fluid, it causes the fluid to leave the cell and it shrinks up that cell because there's not as much fluid in there. Now, the most common use for hypertonic fluids is cerebral edema and hyponatremia. But we also use it for severe hypovolemia and also metabolic alkalosis. All right, guys, so write this down. This is a major NCLEX fact. So when you have a patient that's on hypertonic fluids, you need to frequently monitor the sodium level. It is a big priority because especially if you have a patient with cerebral edema, or hyponatremia, you don't want to correct it too fast because it can cause a severe exacerbation with that cerebrodema and swell up their brain even more. So if you have a question on your nursing exam asking about hypertonic fluids and it's related to cerebrodema, make sure you monitor that sodium frequently. Now we talked about how hypotonic fluids is low in sodium, so you're going to have low numbers. The same is true for hypertonic fluids. So all your fluids that have high numbers, most common is 3% saline. These fluids right here are your common hypertonic fluids that you need to remember. So it's really not complicated. If you remember hyper, of course, means high. That means that it's high in sodium. So these numbers are higher because it's talking about the concentration of sodium in that fluid. Same thing with hypotonic. It's low because there's a low amount of sodium in that fluid. So it is a low concentration of sodium in that fluid. All right, guys, that sums everything up with IV fluids. Now, remember, if you guys haven't downloaded it already, we have a free fluid and electrolytes study guide that you can find on our website at tactilevr.com or in the link in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, first of all, thank you so much for watching the video entirely through. It makes our day if we know that nursing school got a little bit easier after watching one of our videos. If you guys like this video, make sure you like it, subscribe to the channel for more, and drop down in the comments for any more ideas that you need help with nursing school. If you want to contact me personally, it's 940-218-4062. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video.